Hey, how's it going? Well, I wanted to address some things in a Prince of Queens video about some things that are annoying about some gay men. And I'm not going to go through the whole video, because there are some things that are just sort of vloggy, where it's just... He's basically talking about his experiences, and I, I don't have any... I, what, am I going to argue someone's experiences? That doesn't work. But I'm going to address some things in the video. Some things I'm going to show that I agree with. And there are, there are a few things that I don't necessarily agree with, or I just want to clarify some things. So, here we go. I want people to understand that I can take what I can dish in terms of criticisms of identities that I am attached to, just so long as the criticisms are legitimate. That said, I'm going to spend this video criticizing gay men. And boy, do I have a lot to say. Just today, I was trying to edumacate some gay Hillary Clinton supporter about some things by linking him to some great videos, and I got the typical I wish you would have been more specific as to what videos you were linking this person to. Because, I mean, some people think that, oh, Bane666 and Sargon of Akkad and Thunderfoot and Undoomed and Bering and uh, a, a whole shit ton of others who word things in such ways that the only people they're going to be preaching to is the choir. You try to get anyone who doesn't believe the same way they do to watch the videos, they're not going to be, they're not going to be very uh, re receptive to that sort of thing. So, what videos did you link these people to? What videos did you link this person to? YouTube isn't a real news source. You should be reading the New York Times kind of response. It was maddening, and he eventually told me the absolute most irritating thing that comes up during internet discussions about politics, which was that I should supposedly be hitting the streets to actually make a difference. Like being a fanatic with a sandwich board and a bell talking about how the end is nigh is more effective than reaching hundreds or thousands of people every day from the comfort of my own home. Well, I fully agree with you that it was a stupid thing for him to suggest for you to do. I mean, how often do you see uh, some singular person protest, someone carrying some picket sign, or even a small protest of, I don't know, a hundred people? How often do you see that make it to the news? Well, you don't. The main people that we're trying to reach, the biggest demographic that we're trying to reach are young people, and most young people use the internet to get most of their information. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's a stupid thing for him to suggest. He can go fuck himself, but the type of things he said were by no means exclusive to gay men. However, here are some things that are. The first thing I want to bring up is just that so many gay guys right now are completely shallow and vapid. This has often been the case, but not entirely throughout my 20-year career of being an open homosexual. There's definitely awesome gay guys out there, and I know several of them, but we're currently going through a depression. I agree, and some of this is because a lot of gay men are afraid to talk about things that may get them viewed as heathens again might get gay people viewed as oh you're you just care about sex you know the way that we that gay men used to get viewed oh we we have to to shy away from that because we have marriage now and we we have to to shove forth the things that are acceptable and of course now it's also because the extreme end of feminism has gotten mixed into the gay liberation movement. Um, now we can't even talk, I mean, we can't talk directly about sexuality because, oh, well, that would that would be putting uh, sexual objectification up on a pedestal and we can't have that. So, it's kind of sad. It's now about, well, you know, let's celebrate these fetishes as long as they're the right type of fetishes. But yeah, let's, let's not talk about problems in the gay community. Let's not talk about rampant meth usage in the gay male community. Let's not talk about the problem with party and play. Let's not talk about bug chasers. No, 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 no. Let's just parrot extreme feminist talking points. 
Now, I don't entirely blame gay men for our own collective, relatively pathetic displays over recent years because I think both media and LGBTQ organizations have been deliberately stacked against us. LGBTQ culture and media as a whole has become increasingly dominated by feminists, and they have seemed to make a very deliberate effort to relentlessly criticize cis gay men over the past few years, especially white cis gay men, and have shown almost zero positive representations of us. Well, that's been a problem the whole time, you know, when it comes to gay men not being portrayed very positively. Generally, the way media portrays gay men is all of the stereotypes. And if you don't match the stereotype, well, you know, you're not very entertaining or something like that, right? And I truly think they did this on purpose. I hear almost constant complaints about masculinity like that obnoxious queen on Seriously TV or that time when every femme gay guy in the universe got their panties in a twist when Russell Tovoy, the actor, talked about how he was glad that he ended up relatively masculine and thanked his dad for that. Somehow this greatly offended every Nelly queen in the fucking universe as if he is not allowed to have his own feelings about his own personal mannerisms and his father. It's unfortunate, and it's common. In the 90s, it wasn't quite as common, but it was still there. But, you know, once we got to the 2000s, I can't even count how many times that I was in some sort of gay establishment, uh, and I overheard someone saying something like, uh, well, I don't trust gay men that aren't at least slightly feminine. What are they afraid of? What are they so afraid of? I'm like, afraid of? What, 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 what makes you think that someone is afraid? Fuck off and get a life. If you want to complain about fragile masculinity and masculine gay men, you might try not being so completely fragile about your femininity. You're right. Both masculinity and femininity are fragile. And anyone trying to claim otherwise is full of shit. And own that shit. I personally don't care if you are a femme guy, but it sounds like you certainly are very insecure about it. Another weird thing is the only openly gay dudes in the music scene who are somewhat popular right now. The only ones I can think of are Sam Smith, and he is just kind of an embarrassing crybaby and not really very cool. Perfume Genius is pretty talented and interesting, but also sort of a crybaby. There's a few queer rappers that people claim to like, but almost unanimously have beats that sound like M.I.A. crap from 2005 that Diplo produced. Now, this annoys me particularly because I spent most of my 20s and early 30s doing music full time, and there legitimately have been some very talented gay musicians out there, some of which even live in places like L.A., but somehow they never got exposure for some reason. I don't completely know what this reason is, but it is frustrating. Worse than that, gay guys right now barely seem to be writing anything interesting that I hear about. They seem to be stuck in a rut of either talking about the same things they were 10 years ago in terms of gay marriage or whatever, like anybody cares, going on and on about how racist gay men are for what they put on their hookup profiles. Yeah, that's always been a weird one to me. I mean, I don't personally have any racial preferences. I have body type preferences, I have, uh, you know, it's always nice when someone's kind of hairy, but, you know, I don't have race preferences, but some people do. I mean, you can't help what makes your dick get hard. You you don't really control that. Um, You can try to guide it in a direction, you know, try to, well, let's wean myself into this, but... You still don't control what makes your dick hard. To me, some of these people might as well be telling uh, gay men, well, you know, um, you you shouldn't be uh, prejudiced against the opposite sex in that way. Oh, so we should just not even say that we're gay. uh, We love everyone. Everyone is attractive to us. Well, no, you can't do that either because that's sexual objectification. Oh. Oh, so, so... Sexuality is love, and love is sexuality. No, they're not. No, they're not. Or, like I said, falling all over themselves to prove how much of a fucking feminist they are.
that or they are Milo Yiannopoulos, which is a lot more interesting, but an entire polar opposite end of the spectrum. Agreed. Milo is an anti-gay gay man who's Catholic and thinks that he's immoral and is going to burn in hell for eternity. So, yeah. There is a dismal void of gay men really talking about anything interesting, especially in how it relates to our maleness and our masculinity. In fact, it's almost like that type of talk about, you know, masculinity amongst gay men in LGBTQ culture and media has been blacklisted. Unless you're a lesbian, and then it's okay because you're breaking gender stereotypes. But if you're a man and you're not breaking gender stereotypes, then you're bad. We're now in a depression, and what's left of gay culture is really rather sad. The first example of depressing contemporary gay reality is the fact that basically every gay guy is a drag queen these days, and that's getting a bit repetitive. Now, I have no problem with drag queens, and my name actually comes from the fact that I used to make music with drag queens, but never really did drag, so I was the prince of queens. Still, while RuPaul's Drag Race is a great show, it has been on for like eight seasons now, and the art form is not really evolving into something that wasn't already around eight years ago or so, mostly. I love my drag queens. But if all you can do is a look and a lip sync, I hope you can learn a few new tricks because nobody will be buying what you are selling within a year or two. Eh, I'm going to have to disagree with you a little bit there. Drag is always going to have a market. Uh, unless our society actually becomes so open-minded that someone could go to work at a conservative office in drag and not be given a hard time. You know, if, if our society gets to that point, then yeah, maybe drag won't have such a market on television and uh, actual live drag shows and whatever. But until then, yeah, it's going to have a market. It's always going to have a market. Next, I just want to point out the whole pup thing. Yes, this is real. This actually exists. It's not just a few bad apples. Really? You've got a problem with this? Why? Different people have different fetishes. Why does it matter to you? There are plenty of gay guys who are at least supposedly into what is called puppy play. And they throw entire parties around it at clubs where guys actually show up in these ridiculous masks and tails and pretend to act like dogs. This obviously seems to bother you. Why? It's every bit as weird as it sounds, and it is to my deep shame that this became popular while I am alive. I just don't get why this bothers you. You are you feel shame over this? Dude, come on. Um, just, just seriously, come on. Now, personally, this is my opinion. I, I, have, I, I, I am not claiming this as a fact, but to me, a lot of this stuff that's been coming up is to counter the fact that our society does not want to accept that humans are animals. People do not want to accept what we are, and we are animals. Um, I take this sort of thing in a direction that that uh, sometimes pisses off people, but grosses out a lot of people. Okay, I've talked about this before, but I'll just say it again. There's a reason why I have the nickname Stinky. Um, there are three areas that I keep immaculate, and everywhere else I don't generally don't do a damn thing with. You know, my ass is immaculate, my hands are immaculately clean, and my mouth, my teeth, are clean. Everywhere else, I don't do really a damn thing with. And sometimes I will wear the same clothes for a very, very long time. Heck, even recently, I got this uh, patch put on the back of my uh, shirt, my jacket. It says, uh, you know... Um, it's just one of my things. Um, I also accept that, you know, we could die at any time. Let's just try to enjoy life as much as we can. You know, if there are some risks involved, then balance out the risks. Figure out where, you know, you want to, to be there and just kind of go with it. And if very few people... Uh, accept it or, uh, you know, like it or whatever, you know, who cares? As long as there is a small, select few people that are into it, fine. 
or even if there isn't anyone else that's into it. If I'm the only one that's into this sort of thing, then fine. You know, I celebrate being heavy. That's where I'm talking about with risks and stuff, you know. I like being heavy. I like being a... <laughs> a stinky, fat, bearded, somewhat hairy man. I like celebrating my animality as much as I can. And if I'm in a living situation where I can do this, um, I'm going to do it. And if people don't understand and people are repulsed by me and people are disgusted by me, oh well, I enjoy what I enjoy. Now, you know, if that sort of thing was to catch on, would you feel disgust and shame and all this stuff because of that? I, I, don't, I don't get this, this feeling shame because some people are, are into the puppy thing. I, I, I don't get it. Um, as lo I mean, this stuff is consensual. This isn't... People aren't having things done to them against their will. So wh what difference does it make to you? Um, again, I really don't care what you do with your own time, and it doesn't make you a bad person if you are legitimately into this. But... I truthfully just don't believe that many of these people actually really are all that into it. I think they're just sort of going along with it because it's trendy. I think it is a weird trend to popularize to sell overpriced leather masks and to create a niche porn market or some nonsense. The gay male leather scene is a very complicated reality and profitable business that I only even slightly understand. But this puppy play thing came from that and I don't think it happened organically. I understand you have your opinions, and I have my opinions, but to me, most of this stuff is just about, I mean, if it's, if it's a trendy thing, it's just like, hey, this looks like fun. This is just people having fun. I don't understand, I, what's, oh, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> That's a reason to, to dislike it? God, how many other things are so expensive? Because why would it? I think a lot of marketing was involved. The third thing I want to talk about is how meathead, gym muscled the gay world has gotten over the past five or six years or so. Again, this is something that has never completely left the gay scene because gay guys have always enjoyed muscles, but the amount of bodybuilding and steroids has gotten rather awkward, and I'm not sure I'm completely comfortable with it. I agree that this has increased a lot in recent years. And something, and this is a stereotype, but something I find kind of weird is how often those that focus on that so much don't care about having big calves. You know, big arms, mass, you know, the, the perfect six-pack abs, but your calves can be these puny things and it's cool. I don't know, I, 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 weird thing I focus on. I am all for guys who are somewhat built and in good shape. It's hot. Sure, fine. But what worries me is that most guys who get into steroids end up with all sorts of health problems in a few years. And I don't want to be around to pick up any of that mess. What's funny about that demographic as well is that they hate those that like being fat. And they'll use that same thing about, oh, well, uh, health issues... It's just like, yeah, but what about the health issues of what you do? Well, you know, that's different. Oh, okay. My view of the whole thing is we're going to die no matter what. And if we're doing something that takes even 10 years off our lives, if we're actually having a good time, if we're really enjoying life, you know, is is getting gaining those extra 10 years worth... Uh, living in ways that don't make you happy? I don't know. You know, I have my own judgments for myself on this. I certainly can't really judge someone else's sense of this. But, uh, you know, these are questions that I think people should ask themselves. However, what I do want people to know is that I don't think anybody is above ridicule, including myself and my own demographic. I love gay men, but more than that, I hate just about everything in kind of a weird way. If I didn't have major criticisms of just about everything on the planet, I would have probably never made this channel. Have a good day. Thanks, you too.